Welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video with Stephen Cornett. Today we got a fun one. We're gonna do a fall garden harvest video. I'm gonna take you through all the veggies and mushrooms that I have ready to go right now. We are at almost at the end of October and our first frost is coming in November. So we need to harvest what we can before winter comes. So come on, let's go check out what we got in the garden today. So for harvesting, all I need is my Opinel knife, my Felco pruners. I've had these for over 10 years now and they've never done me wrong. What we have here is Totsoy, also called Asian spinach. This is a brassica family green. So the same family as like radishes and broccoli, kale. And it is a wonderful alternative to your normal spinach, which, which is in the goosefoot family. This is something that I grew for my market garden and was a great thing to grow for me because in Southern California, it was a lot harder to grow spinach all year round. Whereas this, I could do it all year round. Um, it's great fried as well as raw on a salad. Let's come on over here to our okra. So okra is one of those really prolific crops that just pumps out food every single day. You have to come out here twice a day to harvest it, just like zucchini squash. And you wanna harvest it about this size, a little bit larger, um, so that the texture stays really nice. And here's another great one right here. And because we are getting temps down to 45 degrees Fahrenheit at night, this thing has slowed down its growth considerably. Once we get our first frost, it's gonna be done and uh, but we've really enjoyed the okra this year uh, frying it up in our air fryer or uh, baking it and my wife actually has fallen in love with okra so now let's get into peppers peppers did really good this year uh, this year I tried I think it's called midnight purple I get almost all my seeds from true leaf market they're my favorite I use them for when I was running my farm professionally, for microgreens, for all sorts of things. And that's who I recommend. I got a link in the description and I'll, I'll uh, put the seeds that I used in this garden so that it's easy for you to find the ones that I grow. So you'll notice we didn't stake these peppers up or do a bunch of work with them. I didn't prune these and they were still insanely prolific. And that just goes to show you that you can be a lazy gardener and still get amazing fruit like this. So right at my feet here, actually, if you've ever grown watermelon, you know that at the end of the season, there are some melons that will grow, but they don't have enough time to actually become ripe. So what I've been doing with these is I raise pigs regeneratively, uh, grazing them in our woods back here. So this is a great thing to feed to your pigs. You could feed this to your chickens. Your dog would even love this. Dogs absolutely love melons. So we'll save this and we'll go feed our pigs in a little bit here. Let's go on over to the tomatoes. So these tomatoes, end of the season here, they're out of control, they're almost done. I just threw tomato cages on here. These are indeterminates. I didn't take the time this year to build a trellis and do all of that. And this was a, more than enough tomatoes for my wife and I and to share with friends and family. And I didn't have to go to the effort to put up a trellis. So don't feel like you have to have the prettiest garden in order to get food. It's all about the soil health and the health of the plants so that they can give you the most nutrition possible. And that's what I focus here on, on my channel is teaching you to grow the most nutrient dense food, which only comes from healthy, biologically active soil. So as we come on through here, I'm gonna grab a, a couple more tomatoes here. This is gonna, uh, we'll make a nice dinner tonight, I'm sure, and we'll be able to use tons of this stuff in our food. Or I'll save these, I love these in my eggs in the morning. Um, up here, we have some cucumbers. These are actually Korean cucumbers. My wife is Korean and these are really fantastic, uh, very crunchy, they go, they're just so good raw and uh, can't recommend them enough. I'll try to find the name of them for you if you wanna look for them, but fantastic slicing. And here, what we're doing is, 
we actually left one of the cucumbers to save the seed. So you let it dry out, it gets super huge, and then you can clip that off and save the seed. Because this seed's a little bit harder to find, more expensive, so we wanted to make sure and save that for next season. And this is actually the only type of cucumber that we grew, so there will not be any cross-pollination between different species. And that's something a lot of people confuse, is that if you're growing, let's say you're growing five different types of cucumbers, when those bees go to the different pollen, there's gonna be a mix of pollen most likely in your cucumbers. That's not gonna change the cucumbers for this season, but if you wanna save the seed for next season, those genetics will have crossed. You may get a cucumber that is great. You may get a cucumber that is horrible. So be careful with that on saving seed with fruiting type vegetables. Let's go check out another one of my wife's favorite, which is hot peppers. We had fun this year. We actually pickled our hot peppers this year. We're trying to get more into preserving the harvest. So we did a, vin a vinegar preservation. My wife just set up a lacto-fermented uh, hot sauce. You put all the peppers in a jar for 12 days, let it ferment, then blend it up into a hot sauce. And that's a way to get more probiotics for your gut and gives it a really nice flavor. So I tell you what, we're, uh, gonna let these probably grow out a bit longer honestly because we just harvest these recently but these red ones I will grab these red guys because they're ripe and they're gonna have more nutrients in them and the longer you let a ripe one stay on there eventually it'll start to kind of dry out and not be as good so let's grab these red ones here and what else do we have we got some cayenne we have serrano and jalapeno we don't like to get too crazy spicy. You know, habanero is basically the limit for us because, you know, this is already a great hot sauce that's gonna have plenty of kick. So for harvesting these, you can just pop them right off. It's so easy. If you're real brave, you can go ahead and eat one. I'm not gonna do that right now, but. <laughs> okay, throw that in our basket. And if you're wondering, I showed how I planted all of this stuff this year so typically on my videos, I'm showing you tons of different regenerative farming techniques and I'm showing you tons of planting techniques. Here we go, guys. So this is something interesting. I'm sure most of you recognize this. These are carrots, of course. These got pretty big. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that's a fatty. So these are our rainbow carrots. This is our dog, Millie. She's here helping. Millie, here, let's see if she can do it. Millie, come here. Millie, come here. Dig, dig, dig. Dig, dig, dig. Good girl, good girl. So she helps us farm sometimes too. What else we got in here, guys? So here's another, look at this. Those are crazy big. So I love, we got a crazy dog out here. So I love, love, love the rainbow carrots. My customers love these. If you're a market gardener, this is just like one of the best things. It just pops on a market table. Um, kids love the colors and there is a little bit different flavor I'd say between some of the colors it's not super um, different and if you've never tried a fresh carrot oh my gosh take one from your garden take one that you bought from the store and chop them on your um, cutting board and notice the smell difference it is crazy that's how I know I'm eating good food when I pull it from my garden is that smell okay so we'll throw these in the basket All right, it's getting pretty full here all right, let's grab another big crop. What I did, guys, I planted potatoes here. One huge technique that you gotta get into is interplanting. So I interplanted a row of carrots in between these potatoes. You can see the dead potato here, so I know that there's gonna be some potatoes here. We already harvested half of this bed. So what this allowed me to do was get two varieties of crops and a lot more food. I would never, I put two rows of potatoes here and the carrots don't take up a bunch of the sunlight energy that hits this bed. So it didn't really shade out the potatoes. So combining crops that have either different light requirements or different heights or won't shade each other out is a way that you can get a lot more food in a small space. So let's go ahead and see if we got more. Potatoes are one of those crops that are just really fun to harvest another great one for kids to get involved 
So we actually harvested a bunch of these already. So I recommend harvesting your potatoes before they actually go fully dead. Basically once the plant yellows and falls over, that's when they're done. They're not gonna grow anymore. And that's a good time to harvest. So here we go, let's keep digging down. And the potato can spread out quite a bit. It's not as crazy as a sweet potato would be, but you wanna make sure to dig down. And these are brand new beds. These are only, these are less than a year old. So my soil will actually stop. Here's another one. My soil stops about four or five inches down actually, and it kind of becomes more hard. Whereas I have all this compost up here. Okay, so that's all we're gonna get from that one. So we have a lot more to harvest here. We actually just recently learned to can, speaking of preserving the harvest, and we canned a ton of these potatoes. So it'll be good for soups in the winter. We'll come back later and we'll harvest the rest of these beds. And what's neat about the carrots, at this point, we're going into winter, they can kind of just sit in this bed and stay super fresh. And it's not very hot, so they're not gonna bolt or go to seed. All right, so now behind me here, this, these are beds that I kind of just let go wild. These were the you know, extra transplants that I had. So we got tomatoes, we had a ton of butternut squash here, some acorn squash, or whatever this one was. Here's, oh, here actually, here's a great one to harvest, guys. So this is a, I believe this was a Korean winter squash. It's very similar to an acorn squash though. And you can tell it's ready because of that orange spot. But the rest of these are actually done. We've harvested them all. And what I did with these beds is I just put my remaining transplants here. So whatever I had, I just let them go crazy and whatever happened, happened. This, this plant right here is kind of special. This is a sesame plant. Sesame is eaten raw a lot in Korean um, cooking. Uh, if you've ever had Korean barbecue, you may have had lettuce wraps. Maybe, you've, maybe they had sesame, but in Korea, there's always a sesame wrap um, with your meat and you can eat it. It's delicious. Um, and there's a lot of things that you can do with it. Um, you can pickle them. Okay guys, so let's go grab that watermelon and let's go check out the piggies. Okay, you guys, so these are my pigs right here. I've been raising them for about nine months. They're getting very close to harvest. We're gonna be doing a harvesting class here in town pretty soon, I'm excited to do. So, here we go. We just gotta smash it open for them and they're gonna love it. All right, and that's one of the beauties of pigs. You can feed them anything and they will love it. I ferment uh, leftover vegetables and their feed and all sorts of things for them to eat. So let's go on, let's check out our shiitake mushroom logs. This was another new thing for us this year that we have just fallen in love with because it's so easy to grow mushrooms and of course they're delicious and some of the most nutritious food on the planet with tons of medicinal qualities. So let's head over to our new mushroom area. So here we are in our A-frame style mushroom log setup. Most of these are on oak logs. And if you wanna learn how to do this, I have a super in-depth video teaching you how to set these up. It's quite easy. It's a little bit of work, but once you set it up, you'd harvest these for years and years. So you can use a knife to cut the mushroom. <clears throat> or I can just come here and pluck it off. And we'll throw it in our basket. So mushrooms, just like okra or squash or most other vegetables, well, that grow to a bigger size, there's kind of an ideal window of time that you wanna harvest them. So too small, you're not gonna get as much, you know, weight of yield. Whereas like a mushroom about that size, is getting, it's getting close to an ideal size. If it gets too big, the texture changes and that sort of thing, like on vegetables. So we're still figuring out the ideal perfect size for us, but we like stuff that's right around that size or a little bigger. So let's just go through here. And what we do is we come out once a day and we take those biggest, best mushrooms. These smaller guys, we're gonna let them grow out a little bit longer. Okay, so we got a really great harvest here. And it's pretty fun for me too, being able to 
try out new things like these mushrooms. That's, and that's one of the best things to me about gardening. That's why I've been doing it for over 10 years is that every year I can try something new. I can try a new technique of growing and it just never gets old. So let's go out uh, to the table here and let's check out everything that we harvested and what we could make for dinner. So we've got our rainbow carrots, the, what we believe is the Korean acorn squash, Tons of shiitake. Okay, we got our midnight bell peppers. We've got a, some serranos and little baby jalapenos. I think these are, these were sweet 100 tomatoes. That's a classic cherry tomato. We have our tatsoi that Millie shot dirt all over. Thank you, Millie. And only a couple okra. We've been harvesting those a lot. And a handful of potatoes. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, what are you harvesting right now? I'm super happy with this end of summer harvest. And I hope that everybody out there has a great one too. Please be sure to subscribe, like this video, share it with your friends if it will help inspire them to start growing their own food.